आवाज आती है ओके गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आर यू देयर आई मीन हाउ मेनी स्टूडेंट्स 46 इट्स स्टिल गुड गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम रियली सॉरी इट वाज नॉट माय फॉल्ट इट वाज अ टेक्निकल इशू आई वाज ट्राइंग फॉर अ क्विक कनेक्शन but probably internet is too slow that's why i couldn't connect so last time we were discussing on um, definitely oral hypoglycemic agents but there again we had few types of category uh, that these category uh, based drugs do act on particular target for example the first target was uh, potassium sorry atp dependent potassium channel uh, blockers so there we have two categories sulfonylureas and megalitinite so next category uh, i mean glp1 receptor agonist dpp4 inhibitor inhibitor thiazolidine diones or ppr gamma agonist etc so um, yesterday uh, or the last day we were focusing on a uh, little superficially like what exactly the mechanism of action and uh, what are the different areas it actually bounds and what are different parameters so these are the things it was not being covered so uh, i thought uh, i mean i was checking my video uh, of the last class so there i saw uh, maximum things were discussed on sulfonylurea and uh, megalitinite so there we found uh, it was quite emphasize that potassium or atp sensitive potassium channel were discussed really well but we need to know certain more things about this ppar gamma glp1 dpp4 or uh, l type cells of entero endocrine cells so these are the things has to be discussed and finally we will conclude the session with a new class of uh, oral hypoglycemic agent that has been there in europe since last 10 years but in india it's only 4 or 6 year india That this this kind of drugs has been launched that is sglt inhibitors so today's discussion will be on this particular types of category of and oral hypoglycemic agent though i am mentioning i'm i'm telling repeatedly it's oral hypoglycemic agent but there are certain drugs among all these category for example aminyl analog and glp1 agonist there are few drugs that actually uh, they are not oral uh, orally available and that it is possible to intend rather uh, you know, these are basically injectable either by intravenous or mainly subcutaneous or intramuscular so let us start to the session that is uh, the classification part we had this part um, then actually find from uh, point 3 actually it will be uh, discuss i mean parameter for today's uh, discussion okay so this part glp1 agonist dpp4 inhibitors and finally uh, these things thiazolidin diones then these things so i'll be not discussing this d2 receptor agonist because it is not uh, i have not seen neither it is there in the guidelines that is bromocriptim is not intended for type 2 diabetes these are very specialized case where bromocriptin is intended where it is i mean the type when Uh, diabetes associated with certain kind of uh, central issues i mean central nervous system issues then bromocriptin is uh, being used so uh, let us start to be today's topic from thiazolidin diones so uh, last time we were focusing on that is uh, paroxysm proliferator activated receptor gamma we don't know we 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 really do not have this idea where, what exactly is this where it situated what are the physiological issues associated with the particular things so we will first discuss the target then we will discuss the drug and its mechanism and the related issues so thiazolidine diones are the ligands for ppar gamma i mean paroxysm proliferator activate receptor okay so this is again uh, of two isoforms i mean ama i last there i mentioned alpha uh, beta and gamma so ppar gamma receptor that is uh, principally associated with regulation of genes not the product i'm telling you regulation of those genes those genes which are basically associated with glucose and lipid metabolism principally lipid metabolism and they are uh, highly i mean distributed through basically principally whatever you can say principally 
uh, adipocytes or adipose tissue. Examples, we have rosiglitazone and pioglitazone. Pioglitazone, uh, lots of famous brands, it's I believe in the market like Pios, Piosar, etc. And rosiglitazone is also uh, highly popular. One of another drug is there, uh, triglitazone or something, I forgot it, but that has been banned from market in 2000 due to its severe uh, hepatotoxicity. So uh, we have three types of PPAR. Uh, one is alpha, uh, then delta, and finally, the principal association that is gamma. Alpha PPAR, basically, uh, principally distributed uh, there in the liver, kidney, heart cell, and adipose tissue. Beta is, uh, uh, definitely it is uh, there in everywhere, but markedly, I'm markedly what I'm saying is, physiologically, their distribution in brain, adipose tissue, and skin is really, really important for its uh, physiological activities. Mane, mostly they innervate everywhere, but their actions are more prominent or predominant there in these particular types of cells. Last category of PPR is basically the gamma category. Uh, now there I mentioned one thing, alternative splicing is expressed in three forms. Now alternative splicing means uh, uh, that I had discussed probably there in uh, substance P or neurokinin, there in bradykinin, remember you should. Alternative splicing means one gene is there and uh, sometimes it is giving birth to a, a particular type of um, mRNA and some other time or rest of the time, uh, depending upon the tissue and environment, that gives a birth to a different kind of mRNA. So alternatively, one, it is giving gamma A at a second time, maybe it is giving gamma 3. A third time it is maybe giving gamma 2, depending upon the uh, uh, um, environment and the tissue. So mainly one thing is really, really important to, I mean, that is the principal concern of PPAR is basically, it is, a, uh, I mean, a, a nucleic receptor associated with gene regulation. And these genes are principally lipid and uh, glucose, uh, um, I mean, associated mRNAs, expressive genes, which are actually uh, responsible for this glucose and lipid metabolism. And uh, among all the PPR, gamma is really important in terms of diabetes and insulin secretion. Uh, and they are principally, uh, uh, I mean, distributed, uh, I mean, markedly distributed there in the adipose tissue. So now we know what exactly these uh, PPAR. <coughs> so thiazolidine dions, uh, it activates PPAR gamma receptor. It's uh, there in the adipose tissue mainly. And the endogenous ligand, meaning uh, whatever the receptors are there. For example, we have adrenergic receptors. We have cholinergic receptor, right? So we have an endogenous, uh, I mean, uh, ligands because if the if the receptor is there and it is exerting its function and somewhere it is activating that means inside our body some compounds are or some ligands are there it is synthesized intermittently and it is binding with the receptor exerting that particular biological effects so definitely there must be some endogenous ligands for PPAR gamma which includes small lipophilic molecules such as oxidized linoleic acid and arachidonic acid and uh, uh, prostaglandins principally uh, PGJ2, huh? 15D PGJ2, that is again uh, a byproduct of Cox pathway. Uh, Cox pathway, you can see that you can see that PGI, PGH, but there are lot, lots of other things also being uh, produced by, by, by these arachidonic acid pathway and uh, you might have a term no or aware of this term called lipoxins, endoperoxidase. So these are the different products actually. Um, it, it is also being produced by the arachidonic acid pathway. That is the principal ligand for this PPR gamma receptors, whatever it is producing by the uh, Cox pathway. Got it? So the ligand binding to PPR gamma causes heterodimer formation with the retinoid X receptor, meaning uh, this is actually a receptor. PPAR gamma is a receptor that again triggers another receptor. Okay. That again triggers another receptor called retinoid X receptor. Uh, I mean, we know GPCR, alpha, I'm sorry, ion channel uh, receptor, 
tyrosine kinase receptor and nucleic receptor so there are different kinds of gpcr for example serotonin we have gpcr we have gpcr from adrenergic system so different systems different ligands uh, they have different kinds of receptors so uh, in nucleic <coughs> nucleic receptor we have a type of receptor called uh, retinoid x receptor or basically retinoid receptor retinoid receptors are divided in x y etc so this is a type of type of receptor is x type of receptor uh, and, and its principal ligand is basically ppa or gamma now interaction with retinoid x receptor uh, the ppa or gamma uh, it it actually activates certain specific genes there in very i mean uh, near to the binding site and they promote the gene expression of those genes responsible for glucose and lipid metabolism so let us focus on the primary diagram of ppa and there is take this thing so we have this diet and in the adipose tissue that enters inside the cell right so this is the cell membrane and once it is there so it will be taken up by the cox or lox enzyme so they will produce this kind of uh, endogenous ligand that is 15d pg uh j2 or pgd2 or leukotrienes that actually binds with these or maybe uh, there is similar kind of um, linoleic acid it is directly coming into the cytosol they will bind to the ppr alpha or ppr gamma and finally once this is binding with the ppr gamma that will bind with the rxr or retinoid x receptor so that will again ex uh, i mean <coughs> express the genes associated with the glucose and lipid metabolism so this is all about the ppar gamma got it so that's why i have emphasized so you need to understand these targets are really really important i mean it's really important because uh, until unless you know where exactly ppar gamma or ppar it's situated what's its distribution pattern and what's its physiological function you never understand the mechanism of action of uh, thiazolidine diode so action uh, mechanism of action and its pharmacological effect meaning uh, how it is acting its pharmacodynamics and uh, after acting what are the different effect it biological effect it exerts it expresses right so the principal response of uh, two ppr gamma activation is basically adipocyte differentiation meaning we have certain stem cells right one cell is there and it is giving birth to a different kinds of cells so those again cells are giving giving birth to different kinds of cells so and the stem cells are there uh, so that is producing uh, cell a b c d both kind of cells right so b cells is basically adipocytes now ppar gamma o cell ter modhe jodi thake that will transform that particular cell b into adipocytes okay so different kinds of uh, you know, proteins will be released by the activation of ppar ar gamma Uh, principally there in the adipocytes meaning a cell is being transformed by the ppar gamma into adipocytes got it so the ppar gamma activity also promotes uptake of circulating fatty acid into cells meaning whatever the circulatory uh, lipids are there it's there in the blood that will be taken up by the adipocyte and shift of lipid stores from extra adipocytes to adipocyte or adipose tissue so it will taking all the lipids from the blood inside the adipocyte second point third point is one sequence consequence of the cellular uh, responses to ppr gamma activation is increased tissue sensitivity to insulin meaning there are lots of parts are there but the end result is basically the skeletal muscles which have innervated with numbers of uh, insulin receptor on its cell membrane that is the tyrosine kinase receptor so if you are taking per ppar gamma agonist for a long time so it has been observed the insulin receptor is being taking the insulin uh, in in a better fashion in a better way i mean the numbers are more activated by the i mean insulin is more activating more uh, numbers of tyrosine in kinase receptors there in the skeletal muscle so ultimately that causes increase in the insulin mediated glucose uptake by the skeletal muscles meaning <clears throat> insulin is responsible for i mean synthesis and translocation of glut4 that we know so if the glut4 is more synthesized so it will be there embedded there in the cell membrane 
and finally glucose will can take entry inside the cell so that is called the insulin mediated glucose uptake insulin is allow actually the uh, it's acting as a doorkeeper for the glucose inside the skeletal I mean, for skeletal uh, muscle cells so treatment with rosiglutazone or pioglutazone reduces plasma level of fatty acid that is the adipocyte will take more amount of lipids by increasing in clearance and reducing reducing lipolysis so do we have only two uh, this kind of drugs rosiglutazone and pioglutazone they are popular in in terms of patient uh, compliance that is they are basically once daily preparations they require one pill per day only so principally they are metabolized by the uh, liver and bioavailability is unaffected by food meaning if you are taking prior to food or after the food uh, it will not actually its absorption is not asso associated with food but since the food is uh, of multiple types of nutrient especially glucose and after taking that uh, the 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 glucose level will increase so uh, for that actually we need to take the pill prior to the meal uh, so there is no association of drug food interaction but to control the glucose level after the lunch or dinner or a heavy meal heavy meal we have to uh, we have to take the pill uh, uh, prior to that so uh, definitely as he, as i was telling the mechanism action of ppi gum agonist uh, they are taking all the lipids from the circulation inside adipocyte so that means there will be a prominent side effect of weight gain agree or disagree are you there students can you respond no sir yes yes sir sir bujhte parle to je weight gain keno hocche मैकुलर एडिमा मीन in in eye uh, uh, and in, in in kidney in both the area uh, the the tissue will be little uh, fluffy in in ua i mean usg ekto phule thakbe tissue gulo so there is a problem of fluid retention but that is again uh, dose related and uh, it has been observed very less amount of uh, uh, patient taking in rosiglutazone or especially rosiglutazone it also there is a chances of anemia and reduction in the hematocrit hematocrit means the blood corpuscles associated parameters got it so there, there there will be reduction in blood corpuscles and exposure for severe years onik din 2 theke 5 bochor dhoro khacche tader mundhe incidence of cardiovascular disease especially ischemic heart disease mane coronary artery occlusion hote pare okane heart rokto kom jabe so ischemic associated heart disease actually it increases 2 to 7% okay so next category drug is basically we have glucagon like peptide um, one agonist or similar domain dpp4 inhibitors so we need to understand what exactly this glucagon like peptide where it come from what exactly its physiological function these are the things are not there in our earlier pathology or a uh, similar kind of um, um, syllabus so let us know first what exactly this glp1 so first of all in intestine we have a cell called enteroendocrine cells enteroendocrine cells entero means it's there in the intestine and endocrine means it is associated with hormones so certain hormones there in the Uh, um, intestine in its associated tissue uh, i mean certain cells are there they are responsible for synthesis and storage of this typical types of hormones so uh, so i mean in the in the villi you might have observed in the histology of many many ways i'm i'm onek shomoy dekhe thake villi the je there are lots of uh, pillars like structure inside the uh, intestine so those cells are um, not only of Single type of cell. There are multiple types of cells are there. 
and among which one of the cell is basically this entero endocrine cells so uh, as we know we 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 have our different kinds of nervous system right so somatic nervous system for somatic cells and somatic issues automaticity we have autonomic nervous system uh, for for heart we have cardiovascular uh, nervous domain so similarly for controlling uh, this uh, git associated i mean gastric acid motility uh, hormone secretion associated with gastric acid secretion or intestinal motility so there is a local uh, i mean uh, well, local high mechanism that has been controlled by this entero endocrine cells um, system and uh, there is a uh, another thing called i mean they 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 have again, again in, in a, this intestine and stomach it is innervated with certain local neurons these uh, neurons establishes uh, enterohepatic uh, i mean uh, you can you can say enterohepatic nervous system so this nervous system and this enteroendocrine system they are highly uh, interactive i mean responsive to each other and they controls these intestinal issues got it so endocrine uh, enteroendocrine cells are specialized cells of the gastrointestinal tract and pancreas with endocrine function they produce gastrointestinal hormone or gastrointestinal peptide in response to various stimuli especially jokhon amra khabar beshi beshi khai loading and a basal dose of food that causes Uh, activation of certain stretch receptor in, in the intestine, and this activation of stretch receptor actually induces uh, secretion of these hormones released from the enteroendocrine cells. In a sense, they are known to act as chemoreceptors. Means certain kinds of chemical will be very close to them, and they will start secreting their hormone, initiating digestive actions and detecting harmful substances, and basically it's initiating. certain protective responses so they are saving the intestine in i mean their basic uh, primary focus is same uh, basically saving the intestine for certain harmful stimuli so in the intestinal endo, uh, intestine intestine the intestinal endocrine endocrine cells are of different types of cells so they have this k cells l cells i cell g cell enterochromaffin cell we know enterochromaffin cells was first isolated Uh, by gadum and their workers and the cells are highly uh, i mean inner i mean they, they responsible associated with uh, secretion of local bulk secretion of and release of serotonin so we have different kinds of cell like n cell s cell d cell n cell or emo cells and many many other types of cells so so this l cell is there there in the endo uh, uh, different kinds of endocrine cells so another type of endo Uh, endocrine cell is L type, so that is responsible of synthesis and storage of G G uh, sorry, glucagon like peptide or GLP one. Now uh, GLP one is again <coughs> we have different other incretins, right? So these are all incretin. Incretins means two things is important to associate with incretin. First, it is us insulin secretogogue, endogenous insulin secretogogue. Second thing is it is being synthesized i mean uh, uh, secreted by heavy um, uh, i mean glucose uptake if high amount of glucose is there in its very proximity of the circulation so it will be secreted why it is secreted that is it is, it will stimulate insulin secretion that, that means it will go to beta receptor it will somehow acting on the beta receptor and it will cause insulin secretion so these two things is really really important to understand incretin lots of kinds of incretins are there so one of the incretin is glp or glucagon like peptide and that is secreted from the l type so next is we must know where it exactly so amra jani dekho ekhane so we have intestine right we have this intestines if we cross sect here so the cell will look like this i mean the cross section will look like this so inside the cell this is the luminal luminal structures of the intestine so these are the projections so from there lots of things are there these projections again are of this kind of things right so this kind of thing is here these cells okay 
So lots of kinds of cells are there in this villi, right? You can observe it is there in the screen. One of the cell is enteroendocrine cells. So their shape is different, like letter M, like letter L, like letter P. So these are the blue cells, okay? These are the blue cells, which is basically enteroendocrine cells, and these are principally L type. So these are the cells in the intestine responsible for synthesis of this GLP. Got it? So <clears throat> the best known in creatine is, I mean, the most potent and physiologically active in creatine is GLP-1 and GIP. So GIP has reduced efficiency to stimulate uh, insulin release and lower blood glucose in persons with type 2 diabetes okay type 2 diabetes khetre gip deficiency ko mai ja whereas glp1 is still effective in type when when the patient is suffering from type 2 diabetes got it both i mean glp1 gip gastrointestinal peptide gip ha ar glp hocche glucagon like peptide eta kintu bhulbe na to amra basically porbo glp kintu glp gip dutu eki cell theke release hoy eki bhabe kaaj kore so both GLP-1 and glucagon are derived from pre-proglucagon. So pre-proglucagon, I'm going to put it in pre-proinsulin, pro-insulin, insulin. So basically, these uh, alpha cells, basically, uh, I mean, islets of Langerhans, we have different kinds of cells, no? beta cells, alpha cells, delta cells, gamma cells. We have alpha cell. This alpha cell is actually... Uh, responsible for synthesis of this pre-proglucagon, which is composed of 1-ET amino acid. So the, 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 the beauty of this pre-proglucagon is uh, sometimes this pre-proglucagon, uh, they give birth to glucagon. But it has its long end terminal chain. Sometimes it also give birth to GLP-1 and GIP. Meaning a whole molecule is whole amino acid of peptide is there that is pre-proglucagon. In terms of different types of tissue, it gives birth to three things. One is glucagon. Again, it is a secretogog, insulin secretogog. Sometimes it is GLP. Sometimes it is GIP. Got it? So intestinal L cells and specific hindbrain neurons uh, process pro-glucagon into the large N-terminal peptide that includes glucagon GLP-1 or GLP-2. Now the interesting issue is intestinal L cell that is a kind of enteroendocrine cell and specific hindbrain neuron process meaning certain certain uh, neurons is there in the hindbrain Amadir Mathar at a higher center areas like hindbrain bullish at the camera on cerebral cortex poly basal ganglia bullish so hindbrain not a matter at the area she can take it to neurons we particular l cells of the ashes lumbar lumbar tomar processes way via spinal cord so if they are stimulated so this probe look upon transform these transform into glp1 and glp2 so that is why uh, it is somewhere associated with a uh, isolated nervous system that is termed as enteric nervous system it's not too old i mean the discovery of this it's probably 20 years it is one of the area that regulate intestinal issues it may be hormone secretion enzyme secretion motility protection uh, macrophage activation multiple things are there so the insulinotropic effect meaning insulin secreting issues tropic means it is affecting another secretion so insulinotropic effect of glp1 is glucose dependent that i was mentioned and that insulin secretion at fasting glucose concentration even with high levels of circulating glp1 and it is minimal so that is not important issue important issue to understand the glp1 so we have these cells in creating L type cells, and that is responsible for secretion of N creatines. So, N creatine is stimulate insulin secretion, definitely secretion of insulin that will lower the blood glucose level. On the other way, this GLP and GIP that causes 
uh, inhibition of glucagon release from the alpha cells. So glucagon will, will basically what it will do, it principally it inhibit the secretion of insulin. So this inhibition process of glucagon, it will be inhibited again, that will be reduced down. So this effect will be totally freed. So the whatever the hyperglycemia is there in case of diabetes, that will reduce down to normal glycemia. Got it? So this is one thing. So this GLP-1 and GIP uh, in the L cells that is being destroyed by the enzyme called DPP-4 enzyme. So we have another uh, another um, uh, drug target, DPP-4. If we block this DPP-4 by our drugs like gliptins, so again, the uh, DPP-4 will not able to degrade that in creatine. So it will, in creatine will keep on working on lowering blood glucose level. So next is uh, basically GLP-1 associated things. Um, I mean that I mean the strategies that controls insulin secretion or stimulate insulin secretion and lowers hyperglycemia. So GLP-1 is rapidly inactivated by the DPP-4, yielding a plasma TF of one to two minutes. I mean certain bolus of GLP is released in the blood, but it will stay only for one to two minutes because it, there is an enzyme called DPP. And it's isolation, I mean, isoform is four. So the enzyme is called DPP. So DPP is, um, DPP4 is taking that GLP1 peptide and it is cleaving into amino acid. So now uh, two strategies we have. One is uh, we can develop certain GLP uh, that is resistant to this DPP. As in case of uh, penicillin, we have this similar kind of strategy. You might have uh, observed the antibiotic called Augmentin. It's a brand name of ampicillin and, uh, uh, sorry, amoxicillin and clovalonic acid. But amoxicillin is being digested by beta-lactamase enzymes. So that's why we have synthesized uh, beta-lactamase ligand. So that is called clovalonic acid here. So, so clovalonic acid, it will be secreted. I mean, it will be blocking the, it will blocking the, um, uh, beta lactamase, so amoxicillin is now uh, on the bacteria. Okay, so similarly, we have um, uh, resistant, uh, similarly, I mean, there are certain kinds of beta lactam antibiotics which are resistant to this beta lactamase. So we have synthesized certain, um, synthesized, I mean, um, uh, synthetic uh, GLP1 receptor agonist which are resistant to DPP4. On the other side, we can block this DPP4. So both the things we have, one is GLP-1 receptor agonist, and we have these DPP-4 inhibitors, right? So GLP, uh, if, you, if, you, if you give GLP-1 uh, agonist, then um, it's basically given, these are all peptides, now. Uh, so that's why you cannot take by oral route. Why? Why we can't take peptide by oral route? Avishek Ghosh, Avishek Ghosh, are you there? Avishek Ghosh? Yes, sir. Hmm. Why we are, um, I mean, uh, giving glucagon like peptide 1 or GLP 1 agonist by intravenous route? So to uh, stimulate insulin secretion. What? Why not we are using oral route? So that proves. Sir, sir, sir it takes time. Okay, that proves you are not in the class. You are doing something else. Sir, ADME, oral inhaler, ADME, kore jabe or parental, jodi intravenous neha hai, then khub jaldi kaj karo. Okay, so these are all peptides. I have written there glucagon like peptides. Now think once again. Can we take insulin by oral route? No, sir. Yes or no? No, oh, sir. No. We have to take by oral route. Why? We have to take by because, sir, it is a uh, basically a uh, uh, made of uh, amino acids. Amino acids or peptides? Peptides, sir. Peptide. Okay. So why you are not taking uh, GLP-1 uh, agonist by oral route? This because, sir, it can be destroyed by gastric enzymes. Why? Uh, because peptides are very easy, easy easily to break. Uh, big amino acid chains are. 
see come to the point in a very straight way peptides are made up of amino acid if you are taking it by oral route so yeah in stomach we have peptidase pepsinogen we have this very common thing so if you are taking that proteins i mean similar for example many a times people used to uh, pronounce like uh, cleopatra used to take it's a mythological issue rather uh, one of the famous um, beautiful women there in the egypt she used to take um, uh, poison of snake snake poison and that's why she, her uh, i mean if you if you s- uh, scratch on some human or some animal uh, that animal may dry, die so that's a fake news rather you know, and most of the time we get in whatsapp and facebook so it's a fake news why because uh, if you are taking animal uh, venoms i mean snake venoms by oral route that will be degraded because that's a protein and protein if you are taking by oral route that will be degraded what kind whatever the kinds of protein is there okay so the pepsinogenase it will in- inactivate the uh, venom as well as here in case of glucagon like peptide so that's why we are taking by intravenous route or by subcutaneous route okay okay now next question is uh, what's the difference between this intramuscular subcutaneous versus intravenous route okay anybody please answer or shall i ask somebody akashaha akashaha yes sir yes what's the difference between intravenous and uh, subcutaneous and intramuscular route i mean some drugs are given intravenously at the same drug sometimes it is given some subcutaneously or intramuscularly why why akash don't waste time if you know you answer don't stand like a non i mean stupid say yes or no no sir at least you can say na you, you can tell no why are you wasting time bajrudeep mondol bajrudeep mondol bajrudeep mondol dora shamanto sir parbo na ami okay so intravenously it sir bolbo ha bolo sir intravenously dia hocche one eta se mane directly vene dia hocche to eta blood er shonge hoye jabe ar subcutaneous mane skin er modhe skin er niche layer e dia hocche to seta deposit form kore rakhte parbe jodi ability basis je sob drugs er tara taderke ei subcutaneous dia hoy a very close and very good rather intravenous jokhon dia jokhon we need almost the therapy in mane now within 1 to 2 minutes we need the treatment now in subcutaneous and intramuscular we give for slow release intramuscular mani hocche ha oral route er theke fast hobe but not equivalent to intravenous mane aste 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 se release korbe depo medication theek hai so let us come to the topic then glp1 uh, uh, agonist basically it works on this way it stimulates insulin secretion inhibits glucagon release delays gastric emptying so there will be no hunger ami din ek 10 bar kheti ichha korche kintu jehetu stomach e khabar ache tai alp alp khide pabe beshi khide pabe na okay and it reduce food intake definitely normalizes fasting and postprandial insulin secretion so so that is the principle why it is stimulating insulin secretion because it is acting as a insulin secretogogue it will act on the uh, it is in creatine inhibit glucagon release so that's the same thing i mentioned release gastric emptying time the peristalsis is calm kore muscle contraction calm kore theke tar jonno it reduces food intake so there will be a end result of normalization of glucose level so principally uh, fasting and postprandial insulin secretion fasting mane jokhon ami khabar khacchi na postprandial mane khabar khawar por so we know na we have two types or two phases of insulin secretion ekta hocche khabar khawar por 
একটা হিউজ ইনসুলিন সিক্রেশন হয় আর এটা হচ্ছে সারা দিন ধরে অল্প অল্প করে ইনসুলিন একটু একটু সিক্রেট হয়ে যায় সেটা একটা সারা দিন ধরে যেটা সিক্রেট হয় সেটাকে জাজ করি আমরা ফার্স্টিং হিসাবে ঠিক আছে আর যখন খাওয়ার পর একটা ব্লাড টেস্ট করি তখন সেটাকে বলা হয় পোস্ট প্রান্ডিয়াল তো দেখবে অনেকের সুগার যখন টেস্ট হয় না গ্লুকোজ ইনটলারেন্স টেস্ট হয় তখন বলে যে আপনি ফার্স্টিং কন্ডিশনে একটু সুগার ব্লাড দিন আমি কত কতটা সুগার আছে মাপবো আর একটা হচ্ছে আপনি এই এত পরিমাণ সুগার খান কিংবা কিছু খেয়ে নিন তারপর আপনার সুগার মাপবো সো এই দুটোর মধ্যে পার্থক্য আছে অনেক সময় ডায়াবেটিস হয় যে কোনো একটাতে কিংবা দুটোতে তাই এই প্যাকেট কমপ্লিট যদি আমরা টেস্ট করি তাহলে বুঝতে পারবো যে ওর গ্লুকোজ অ্যাবসর্পশন গ্লুকোজ ইউটিলাইজেশনে কোন ফেজে বা কোন কোন ফেজে অসুবিধা হয় এটা যখন যাচ করতে পারবো তখন আমি পার্টিকুলার টাইপ অফ ড্রাগ দিতে পারবো দের আর সার্টেন টাইপ দে আর অ্যাক্টিভ অন বোথ দ্য ফেজেস দের আর সার্টেন ক্লাস অফ ড্রাগ হুইচ আর অ্যাক্টিভেট ইন অনলি ফাস্টিং অর বেসিক্যালি অর প্রিন্সিপালি পোস্ট প্রান্ডিয়াল ইনসুলিন সিক্রেশন সো ডিপেন্ডিং আপন দ্য সিচুয়েশন উই ক্যান কন্ট্রোল দ্য হাইপার গ্লাইসেমিক স্টেট গট ইট সো দ্য নেক্সট ইস ইজ বেসিক্যালি ইয়র দ্য ড্রাগস অ্যাভেলেবেল অ্যাজ the acting on glp domain so you have different kinds of injectable glp1 agonist um, all are basically glutides hmm? generic naam jokhon ashbe na tokhon ei terms gulo ashbe ei glutides mani hocche glp1 agonist to shekhane tumi je bhabe prefix debe sei jemon tumi approval pabe name sei onujayi prefix debe to ekhane ekta glutides ache ekta hocche natides ache natides ache tar karon ta onno বেসিক্যালি এর ডোমেনটা আসছে নন হিউম্যান ক্লাস থেকে ওকে সো উই হ্যাভ দিস গ্লুটাইডস মিনস অ্যালবি গ্লুটাইডস ডুলা গ্লুটাইডস লিরা গ্লুটাইডস অ্যান্ড লিক্সি সেনাটাইডস সো লিক্সি সেনাটাইডস অ্যান্ড এক্সেনাটাইডস এরা একটু আলাদা দেখতে হয় আলাদা ডোমেন থেকে এসছে বলে আর বাকি মোরালে জিএলপি ওয়ান অ্যাগোনিস সো উই হ্যাভ ডিফারেন্ট আদার দ্যাট ইজ ডিপিপি ফোর ইনিপেটিস দ্যাট ইজ ডাই পেপটাডাইল ছিলিপ্টিন fourth drug cetagliptin vildagliptin these are most popular uh, dpp4 inhibitors basically they are once daily preparation in the vildagliptins basically two daily but twice daily preparations such kintu glp1 gulo shegulo prottektai ekta problem hocche eder injection er problem ache but favorable issue is sobta ekta kore nite hoy especially exetenatides and albiglutides er khetre thik hai এইগুলো কিন্তু খুব লেটেস্ট হয় এইগুলো থেকে কিন্তু একটা দুটো কোয়েশ্চেন কম্পিটিটিভ এক্সামে আসে সো এগুলো জাস্ট একটা সুপারফিশিয়াল বা ইম্পর্টেন্ট নট সুপারফিশিয়াল ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফিচার্স এখানে বলে দেওয়া আছে ফার্স্ট হচ্ছে এক্সেনাটাইজ সো ইন্টারেস্টিং ইস দের ইজ আ পেপটাইড কল এক্সেন্ডিন ফোর ওকে সো দিস এক্সেন্ডিন ফোর বেসিক্যালি ইট ইজ আ uh you can say reptilian peptide meaning it is being isolated from the reptiles like frogs and snakes and certain kinds of lizards so it's basically uh, i mean we have these exendines i mean similar kind of uh, glp1 exendin is very close proximity with glp1 that is 53% sequence homology now that is important to understand exendin 4 it's similar to glp1 but that is not available in the humans okay so that is available in the reptiles and the gene responsible for these particular exendin it has varies mane 53% gene similarity mane a t g c g sequence er je similarity human glp1 je gene ta ache oi je pre pro glucagon je tar n terminal port part ta তার সাথে ফিফটি থ্রি পার্সেন্ট সিমিলারিটি আছে তার মানে এটা কেন বলা হয় এর মেন কারণটাই হচ্ছে যত বেশি পার্সেন্টেজ বাড়বে সিকুয়েন্স হোমোলজি পার্সেন্টেজ যত বাড়বে তত একই টাইপের সিকুয়েন্স বাড়বে তত রিজেকশন কম হবে তত অ্যালার্জিক রিজেকশন কম হবে বা 
जिनिसटिक जिलपी Liraglutide, albiglutide, dulaglutide, and lixacenatide. So the liraglutide is uh, long-acting DPP4 resistant, and both it has caused it used to cause improvement in the glycemic control and as well as in the weight loss. I mean, it causes weight loss. So it is used in combination therapy. There is a problem of cardiovascular risk. Okay, and uh, similar kinds of uh, things are there. one important line for this slide is dulaglutide one is glp1 linked to the fc portion of the human immunoglobulin so basically era duto kore sequence amra banai duto kore sequence ekta molecule er modhe thake ekta sequence hocche er immunogenicity ke reduce korar jonno ar ekta sequence hocche er pharmacological action exert korar jonno thik hai to ei tuku khub important chilo नेक्स्ट हम जस्ट छविगुल रेखे कि डायपेपटाइड एंड डायपेपटाइट इज फोर इनिबिटर से क्षेत्र में फार्ष्ट इज फार्ष्ट लेफ्ट हैंड स्ट्राइक स्ट्राक्चर इज सीटागलिप्टिन नेक्स्ट उ हाव विल्डागलिप्टिन एंड फाइनल उ हाव लिनागलिप्टिन दिज आर अल फेमस ब्रैंड इस्टाविल इज वन ऑफ द पपुलर फिल्म कोटेड टैबलेट्स अफ सीटागलिप्टिन लंच बै सान फार्मासिटिकल्स अदर आर अल्सो देयर बै सार्टन इंडियन कम्पनिज So okay, so next one we will be focusing on alpha glucosidase inhibitors. Uh, the last day we were talking on acarbose, voglibose, megalitol, etc., etc. But the concept is not that much clear. So in brush border of intestine, we have this typical. I mean, luminant dik theke jodi dako, then we have this intestine. Okay, e bhetor jo intestine lumenta. छोटे पलिमार्स polymers of glucose are there in the food so once they are come in contact with these types of enzyme these uh, bonds will be break down and the glucose will be released there in the intestinal lumen got it so once the glucose is free here so it will be absorbed from intestine to the blood circulation right so alpha glucosidase is, is a glucosidase located in the brush border of the small intestine is a brush border hmm is a eta is ekta uchu uchu jayga er moddho onek gulo erokom is a brush er moton thakbe theke erokom kore kore eta intestine ta pura gol hoye gure jabe gol hoye gure jabe theke so this brush border of the small intestine that act upon on the alpha bonds mane first glucose er one ke sathe सेकेंड ग्लुकोजे चार जो वन फोर लिंक है जो एकटाते आलफा ग्लुकोज थे जी 
কনফার্মেশনাল ভাবে গ্লুকোজ একটা আলফা গ্লুকোজ হয় একটা বিটা গ্লুকোজ হয় তো আলফা বন্ডে সে ক্র্যাশ করে এবং গ্লুকোজকে রিলিজ করায় বাট উই হ্যাভ মাল্টিপল টাইপস অফ গ্লুকোজ আইডিস দের ইন দ্য ব্রাশ বর্ডার অফ ইন্টেস্টাইন অর স্মল ইন্টাইস্টাইন সো দে আর অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইনভেস্টেড হেয়ার সাম দে আর সাম পপুলার আর মাল্টিস গ্লুকো ইনভার্টিস গ্লুকোসাইডো সুক্রেস মাল্টো গ্লুকো মাইলেস আলফা গ্লুকো পাইরোনোসাইটিস এটসেট্রা সো ওয়ান অফ দ্য ইম্পর্টেন্ট গ্লুকোসাইডিস ইজ বেসিক্যালি আলফা ডি গ্লুকোসাইডিস ওকে অ্যান্ড দিস পাইরোনোসাইডিস এটসেট্রা তো উই হ্যাভ আর ড্রাগস লাইক আলফা গ্লুকোসাইডিস ইনিবিটার্স দে স্মল স্মল মলিকুলস সো দে আর ভেরি মাচ সিমিলার টু দিস আলফা অর দিস পার্টিকুলার ওয়ান ফোর লিঙ্কেজ and they are been opted by this alpha glucose enzyme so the starch or dextrin or the polymers of glucose that will liberate the glucose it will be inhibited got it so that is the principal mechanism of action it reduce intestinal absorption of starch dextrin and certain other disaccharides by inhibiting the action of alpha glucosidases in the intestinal brush border Similarly, inhibition of this enzyme slows the absorption of carbohydrates. Finally, that leads to post-prandial rise in plasma glucose is blunted in both normal and diabetic subjects. So, it is nowhere acting on insulin. That's why do not result hyperglycemia. It's only associated with absorption of glucose from the intestine got it so this is a typical mechanism these are the microvillus of the uh, brush border of the intestine so these are the basically alpha glucosidase enzyme present on the basolateral part or the luminal part so your drug called acarbose it's very similar to this i mean there they will be binding there so whatever the glucose is there it will or disaccharides is there it not able to bind with the alpha glucosidase so there will be no breakage of or a liberation of glucose if you are giving acarbose kind of alpha glucosidase inhibitors you have similar kind of alpha glucosidase inhibitors that is uh, voglibose in case of acarbose the incidence of uh, flatulence is really really high but in case of voglibose that is will be reduce so acarbose the famous brand is glucobe is there in the screen uh, so it is an oligosaccharide uh, extracted from microbial origin we have another type of uh, glucosidase inhibitors so that is the important thing we have meglitol right we have meglitol so we have meglitox there in the slide this is a famous brand uh, meglitol in binding with the i mean in combination with metformin it is associated or it's available in the market so meglitol it's a desoxy ekta mananti derivative mananti bhul ache desoxy mycin oromycin ekhane hobe so desoxy oromycin derivative also competitively inhibit we have a different kinds of glucosidases right glucosamylase we have another second type of glucosidase it's not typically alpha glucosidase different types of glucosidase and uh, basically it's also act as a sucrase so they are being opt i mean uh, occupied preoccupied by this meglitol so the sucrase and glucosamylase will not aberrate and liberate glucose amylose and glucose from the sucrase so uh, they reduce postprandial glucose uh, glucose level in the type 1 as well as in the type 2 diabetes finally the important parameter for uh, diagnosis of glucose is basically acylated hemoglobin that is hemoglobin ac i mean tumi jodi ekhon mapo glucose tomar glucose hoyto dekha gelo normal glycemic hypoglycemic kinba hyperglycemic hoy kintu tumi jodi diabetic na hao tahole tomar ei acylated hemoglobin ta normal range e thakbe kintu diabetic jodi hao tahole eta kintu bere jabe হিমোগ্লোবিনের সাথে গ্লুকোজ কম্বিনেশন হয় এটা একটা হিমোগ্লোবিনের ফর্মেশন একটা স্ট্রাকচারাল ইস্যু সো ডায়াবেটিসের ক্ষেত্রে এটা বেরিয়ে যায় ঠিক আছে এবং এটা যখন কমছে তার মানে তোমার ড্রাগটা হচ্ছে অ্যান্টি ডায়াবেটিক বা এটা হাইপারগ্লাইসেমিয়াতে কাজ করছে 
এবং এটা চেঞ্জ হয় দুই থেকে তিন মাস পর পর হুট করে আজকে খেলাম গ্লুকোজ আজকে এর লেভেলটা কমে যাবে এরকম কিন্তু হয় না সো দিস ইজ আ কনফার্মেটারি টেস্ট ফর গ্লুকোজ হুইচ ইজ বিং রেগুলেটেড বাই ইউর হুইচ ক্যান বি টেক ইন কন্ট্রোল বাই দি ইউর আলফা গ্লুকোসাইডিস ইনিমিটার্স ঠিক আছে ইন কেস অফ টাইপ টু ডায়াবেটিস সো নেক্সট আর লাস্ট ক্যাটাগরি ড্রাগ ফর নট লাস্ট আর একটা ক্যাটাগরি আছে দ্যাট ইজ সোডিয়াম গ্লুকোজ ট্রান্সপোর্টার টু ইনিবিটার্স অর SGLT inhibitors that is the latest drug uh, so basically all these dr- categories drugs are basically gliflozin hmm? gliflozins are the sodium glucose transporters we have popular gliflozins is canagliflozins dapagliflozins is really popular apagliflozins a, a drug gliflozins are basically SGLT2 inhibitors now what is SGLT and what is this SGLT2, why these inhibitors and how it is affecting the hyperglycemia or treating type 2 diabetes patients. Let us focus on this. So we have certain uh, transporters, okay. Uh, these transporters are responsible for, uh, I mean, absorption of certain biomolecules. Uh, certain biomolecules are there in the outer part of the cell that is being uh, i mean uh, transported or there will be influx for that as we as you saw in case of uh, glut so glut is again a transporter for the glucose so we have different other types of glucose transporters which is basically sodium dependent glucose transporter meaning the transporters it will take sodium in one hand another or in uh, another hand it will take glucose so the transporter will be in, come inside the cell and it, and intermittently it will liberate sodium and glucose both and it, the transport will be destroyed or translocated again so that is a principal mechanism so as we know in the formation of urine uh, 95% of our of the fluid it is being excreted are extracted from the blood to the glomerulus filters and in the proximal convoluted tubules of the nephron and in nephron maximum part of these blood constituents or essential nu- nutrients again that will be reabsorbed from the uh, different parts of the nephron example proximal convoluted tubule loop of henle and distal convoluted tubule in the proximal convoluted tubule we have we can see these things multiple types of macromolecules and ions are being uh, uh, reabsorbed that is 90% of the renal uh, i mean uh, reabsorption part is taking place in the proximal convoluted tubule others are areas are there for example urea in case of loop of henle uh, urea water sodium potassium and ammonium ion they are again reabsorbed there in the distal convoluted tubule got it so this is the proximal convoluted tubule if you zoom this then we may get this particular picture where this is the lumen and so there are lots of urine it is available there in the lumen and sorry there this is in the lumen so here glucose is there sodium is there everything is there so that will be taken up by the transporter there in the present in the basolateral position of this proximal convoluted tubule cells ei ekta ekta kore cell eikhane ei bhitorer dike sglt transporters thake theke ei sglt transporter ekhane theke ekta sodium nebe ekta glucose nebe newar por সেলের মধ্যে এখানে ঢুকিয়ে দেবে এইখানে গ্লুট টু থাকে হ্যাঁ এটা আর একটা ট্রান্সপোর্টার যে গ্লুটকে ভেতর থেকে বাইরের দিকে নিয়ে যায় এবং এখানে লুপের এই যে লুমেন এই জায়গাটা এইখানে এখন গ্লুকোজ চলে এলো এইখানে ব্লাড ভেসেলস থাকে এখান থেকে ব্লাড ভেসেলস আবার গ্লুকোজ চলে যাবে ইউ ড্রাগ ফর এক্সাম্পল দিস গ্লিটাজোলস ইউ ড্রাগ it is binding with the sodium sorry glucose binding site of the sglt2 there in the uh, present there in the basolateral part 
so the glucose will not able to bind with the SGLT2 transporter and it will be not very absorbed got it so this is the principal mechanism and association of SGLT now question is you should ask a question like the similar mechanism is also available there in the intestine right we have SGLT1 SGLT4 there in the intestine so the intestinal lumen it will take up the sodium and glucose and take the in, uh, glucose inside the cell and the glucose will be there in the blood circulation but in intestine this SGLT4 is really really uh, more or is distributed and your drug uh, for example this all glyphosones so these these are all uh, their viability is really, really a problem in terms of absorption inhibition there in the intestine mane sglt aro to intestine e ache shekhane glucose absorption o amra atkate pari ei drug ta diye kintu shekhane bio availability ekta problem hoy dekha geche je kidney te je reabsorption process ta hoy seta ke jodi atkate pari clinically ha amra to lab e to onek kichu kori onek kichu hoy clinically onek kichu hoy na seta jodi clinically atkate pari tahole er hyperglycemia ta onek control hoye jabe because jokhon i blood e glucose jabe na tokhon i liver er jome thaka glycogen bhangte thakbe gluconeogenesis bondho hobe ebong aste aste glucose ta cell er moddhe glucose utilization barte thakbe theke so this is the primary mechanism of sglt two inhibitors prochur lok chole eshe okay so sglt2 is high affinity ekhane baki ta porishkar diye rekhechi tumra ekbar parle pore nebe ekhan theke ami ektu porbo thik ache so early studies in diabetic animal demonstrates that uh, there is a ekhane eta to oshubidha hoy na jinish ta korte okay so early studies in diabetic animals demonstrated that hyperglycemia joto hyperglycemia hote could be maintained or ei jinish ta ke florizin type er kono dye jodi amra ditam dekha gache dewar pore dekha gache je ei je hglt ba glucose intake byapar ta na eta oto ta hoy na blood glucose level chhat kore kome jay to shei khan theke protom eta protom designed hoy examples are clana glyphosin dapa glyphosin and impact glyphosin so these are glyphosin presently available in the market as uh, sglt2 inhibitors that inhibit the uh, sodium dependent glucose transporters and finally it inhibit the reabsorption of glucose from the proximal convoluted tube of the nephron present in the kidney got it so next category or last category drug is other glucose lowering agents so uh, as we know as in the first uh, class of the anti diabetic or the in, in diabetes basically we are focusing on different types of cells present there in the pancreas we have alpha cell beta cell delta cell gamma cell etc etc so now the cell is there that is uh, uh, responsible for synthesis and release and storage of amylin so islets of langer hands it 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 stores this amyloid polypeptide termed as amylin made up of 37 amino acid and pancreatic beta cell and secreted uh, insulin secretion is basically regulated by this amylin mane beta cell regulation er khetre this amylin is one of the important part so amylin is a endogenous thing so in amylin there are lots of modifications and has been taken place so we had developed a new kind of amylide sorry amylin that is pramlintide okay so we have pramlintide that is resistant to uh, peptidases or pepsinogens basically you can say peptide peptidases so we have human amylin in the left hand side and right hand side we have pramlintide so these are all injectables so different configurations has been taken up it's not a pharmacological issue so uh, pramlintide is basically given by the subcutaneous roots 
prior to males light act through the amyloid receptors in the specific region in the hind brain that is a interesting issue meaning amyloid is secreted from the pancreas it is there it is directly not acting on the beta receptors okay the beta receptor is very close to amyloid secreting cells but not it's not acting on its proximity rather this amyloid receptors is there in the brain the blood is reaching in the brain carrying the amyloid analogs pramlinide so pramlinide it's now binding with the amyloid receptor in the hind brain so hind brain is and why these things are coming hind brain is regulation uh, it's responsible for regulation of lots of um, intestinal issues intestine koto ta peristalsis hobe gastric emptying time koto hobe ebong shekhane koto ta macrophage intruded hobe ba shekhane recruit hobe puro byapar ta basically hind brain theke regulated hoy by the means of this entero endocrine system মানে ওই লোকাল কিছু হরমোন সিক্রেট করিয়ে করিয়ে ইনসুলিন বা ওই ইন্টেস্টেনাল ইস্যুটা রেগুলেট করে ঠিক সো অ্যাক্টিভেশন অফ দ্য অ্যামাইলিন রিসেপ্টর রিডিউসেস লুকাগন সিক্রেশন ফার্স্ট সেকেন্ড ডিলেস গ্যাস্ট্রিক এমটিং টাইম ওয়ান্স দের ইজ আ গ্যাস্ট্রিক এমটিং টাইম ডিলেইং সো দে উইল বি মোর অ্যামাউন্ট অফ স্যাটিয়েটি স্যাটিয়েটি মানে খাওয়ার যে তৃপ্তি সেটাকে বলা হয় স্যাটিয়েটি ফিলিং আমরা বলি না কি সুন্দর খেলাম এক প্লেট বিরিয়ানি কিংবা প্রচুর ভাত কিংবা লুচি কিংবা সিমুলার কাইন্ড অফ ফুডস তখন খাওয়ার পর আমাদের ওই মেকানো রিসেপ্টার্স কিছু স্ট্রেচ রিসেপ্টার স্টমাকে থাকে তারা একটু স্ট্রেচ হয়ে মানে যেহেতু স্টমাক একটু স্ট্রেচ হবে না ভেতরে ইনটেক হচ্ছে স্ট্রেচ রিসেপ্টারগুলোকে প্রথমত অ্যাক্টিভেট হয় সেটা মাথায় যায় এবং মাথা বোঝে আমি এখন ফুল ইন ফুড সো তিনটে জিনিস করে ইট রিডিউসেস গ্লুকাগন সিক্রেশন মানে গ্লুকাগন ইনসুলিন সিক্রেট করায় তো সেটাকে সরি ইনসুলিন সিক্রেশনকে হ্যাঁ সিক্রেট করায় এবং ফাইনালি পুরো ব্যাপারটা ঘেটে দিলাম সরি গ্লুকাগন সিক্রেশন বেসিকালি ইটস আ সিক্রেটো গগ ইনক্রেটিন গ্লুকাগন এরা সব সিক্রেটো গগ এবং দ্যাট ডিলেস গ্যাস্ট্রিক এফটিং টাইম প্রিন্সিপালি এরা যে জায়গাটা কাজ করে সেটা হচ্ছে খাবার ইনটেক খাবার ইচ্ছে ব্যাপারটা খুব কম করায় ওকে বেসিক্যালি খাবার ইচ্ছে বা স্যাটিটি ব্যাপারটা খুব বাড়িয়ে দেয় এবং আমার খিদে এই যে গ্লাই ডায়াবেটিস হলেই আমার ব্লাড ব্লাডে প্রচুর হাইপার গ্লাইসেমিয়া হয় সেখানে যেহেতু গ্লুকোজ ইনটেক কম হয় বাই দ্য স্কেলিটাল মাসল তখন থেকে থেকে খিদে বেশি পেতে থাকে সুগার পেশেন্টসদের সো এই ব্যাপারটা প্রাইমলিন টাইড কন্ট্রোল করে ওয়ান অফ দ্য ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইস্যু অফ প্রাইমলিন টাইড ইজ বেসিক্যালি ক্যাটাগরি সি ড্রাগ ক্যাটাগরি সি ড্রাগ মানে অনেকগুলো ড্রাগস হয় যারা কি না প্রেগনেন্সিতে নেওয়া যায় কিছু কিছু ড্রাগস একটা দুটো ড্রাগস নেওয়া যায় মোস্ট অফ দ্য ড্রাগস নেওয়া যায় না সেই ড্রাগসগুলোকে আমরা প্রেগনেন্সি ক্যাটাগরি বিভিন্ন স্টেজে ভাগ করেছি বাইস ইউএস এফডিএ সো এ বি সি ডি এইভাবে ড্রিঙ্কসগুলো হয় এবং এক্স এই ধরনের ক্যাটাগরিগুলো ভাগ হয় প্রেগনেন্সি সি ক্যাটাগরি মানে হচ্ছে আমার অ্যানিমেলসদের ওপর এভিডেন্সেস আছে কিন্তু হিউম্যান এভিডেন্সেস নেই যে if the animal is taking this drug during its pregnancy so there is a abnormality there in the fetal but there is no data available in human mean a human she is taking she has taken uh, this drug and there is a problem there in the fetus or in the uh, newborn so there is no human evidence but there is a uh, preclinical evidence or animalic Uh, evidence that the drug is not good in case of pregnancy so in case this is termed as pregnancy category c drug got it so this is the one of the drug among all anti diabetic drug that is I mean, including insulin i'm telling you including insulin they are all recommended for type 1 as well as type 2 types of diabetes mellitus so let us summarize today's class or whole anti diabetic drugs this is metformin okay so metformin is acting on gluconeogenesis okay so there is no gluconeogenesis so liberation of glucose and utilization of glucose so that the same domain uh, here the keyword where metformin is acting that is glucagon glucose and insulin 
we have these alpha glucosidase inhibitors example acarbose so it is present there in the uh, brush border and it is inhibiting the process of uh, i mean disaccharide to monosaccharide and absorption of glucose we have these megalitinides rapaglinides and nataglinides so they are again acting on beta cells okay and causes secretion of uh, i mean activation of atp sensitive potassium channel and secretion of uh, insulin ins insulinogrogs so we have similar kind of drug that is uh, sulfonyl ureas finally we are focusing on glp domains so we have these incretin based drugs where your glp1 agonist or dpp4 inhibitors are acting and it is causing again these uh, incretins are again basically insulinogog or glucose dependent uh, way glucose dependent manner and final category we have these amylin analogs that is pramlinide it is acting on amylin receptors and uh, basically acting on the uh, amylin receptors that is uh, this amylin is released from the alpha cells on the um, pancreas and the today's first class is thiazolidinediones thiazolidinediones is acting on the ppar gamma so ppar gamma is uh, activated by the thiazolidinediones example pioglitazone and rosiglitazone so this glitazone is binding with the ppar gamma and this ppar gamma dimer is it's activating retinoid x receptor that is responsible for glucose and lipid metabolism and uh, finally Uh, these things are basically regulated by different oral hypoglycemic agents if you have any query or any slide associated issue you can ask me i can guide you so i need not to say anything about uh, oral hypoglycemic agent so i'm ending my today's class if you have any doubt you can ask now sir yes sir bolchi insulin subcutaneous deya hoy kintu intramuscular keno deya hoy na इंट्रामास्कुलर देना तर कारण हेखने लोकल लिसेंस है खूब इरिटेंट तैरि है और मासल्सर पीएचर सा इन्सुलिन पीएचर एक प्रब्लेम आज बुझे पर ठीक है और कोश्चन और कोश्चन आ না স্যার আমার নেই আর হুম না না আমি অন্যদের জিজ্ঞেস করছি আর কোন কোশ্চেন আছে সো इट्स রিয়েলি ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট চ্যাপ্টার বিকজ ইন ইন টু প্যারামিটার্স বিকজ ফার্স্ট ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট প্যারামিটার্স ইজ ভারত খুব ডेंजरस একটা ক্যাপিটাল হিসেবে ট্রিটেড হচ্ছে অ্যাজ আ ডায়াবেটিক ক্যাপিটাল প্রত্যেককে 40 থেকে 50 এর পর প্রত্যেককে একটু একটু লাইফস্টাইলের জন্য বা অন্যান্য আরো অ্যাসোসিয়েটেড ইস্যুর জন্য डायबिटीज प्रचुर हमें भीषण दरकार सेकेंड हम माल्टिपल टाइप अफ ड्रग्स इज देर इन दायबिटीज इन्सुलिन बीना इन्सुलिन निजे अंत पक्षे चार पाँच रकम है बाट इन्सुल छाड़ाओ जो ओरल हाइपोक्लैसिमिक हाइपो नन इन्सुलमिक ड्रग्स गो सो दे आर अल्सो इम्पर्टेंट खूब भलो को पड़े एक बार पड़े ना क्योंकि एक बार पड़े होना बुझते पर स्लैड से मैक्सिमाम जिस देव आ बार बार पढ़े क्वेश्चन थकले जिज्ञेस करो हाँ एन हम क्वेश्चन आसचेना पढ़ते गई तो देखा गया क्वेश्चन आसट इट इज रियलि इम्पर्टेंट यू मस्ट ओपेन द बुक्स पर डे इट्स अगेन अ डोज अफ स्टाडी यू मस्ट ओपेन अ पेज एटलिसट अ पेज रिड एवरी डे सो आफ्टर वन मान्थ इफ सामबडी आस्क यू व्हाट एक्जैक्टली द मेकानिज अफ एक्शन अफ डिपी पी फोर और थर्जोलोट इन डायमंड यू उल फॉक इट सो दैट्स वाई एम टेलिंग इट यू रिपीट द स्टाडी इंटरमिडिएटली मैंने बार बार को पढ़ते हैं आज के पढ़ल ये चैप्टार स्पेशल आज के पढ़ल बार बार पढ़ते हैं प्रत्येक बार पढ़ार पर खूब स्मार्ट रिडिंग हाँ बेसिक्षण पढ़ब ना घेतर घेतर पढ़े क्लस वाने जमन पढ़ता मन पढ़ब पंद्रह मिनट पढ़ब तर बस पढ़ब ना जा ढुकल ढुकल तपर जो करब से जस्ट एक सामारि बनो लिखब ए बी सी को छवि आँकते सामारि बनिए हमें रेखे दिल से देखो कि ना देखो पर बेपार क्योंकि जी तुम लिखले सामारि बनाले निजे निजे से तुम्हार मेमोर ते परमानेंटलि स्टे कर लो स्टेटा कि हलो एक थे छमास थार्ड टाइम जो तुम हिट करो 
তখন সেটা আবার টোয়েন্টি ওয়ান ডেজের মাথা আগে যদি তুমি হিট করো তাহলে ওটা চিরকাল থেকে যাবে আর তুমি কোনো দিন বই খুলতে হবে না পরীক্ষার আগে বই না খুলে অন্তত ডায়াবেটিস না পড়তে হবে না এবং না পড়ে চলে গেলে সো ইউ মাস্ট ডেভেলপ দ্য মেকানিজম আর অর্গানাইজেশনাল ইস্যু অ্যাসোসিয়েটেড টু ডেভেলপমেন্ট ইউ আই মিন দ্যাট 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 মাস্ট কিপ ফর এ লং টাইম ইন ইউর মেমোরি থ্যাংক ইউ আর কারো কোনো কোয়ারি আছে So I'm closing the session here. So there will be no Pooja Madam and class here. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.